Hey everyone, I'm Lauren. Welcome to Furniture Flipping Teacher, where every week I come and teach how I take old and outdated furniture, give it a new life, and sell it for a profit. And in doing so, I have been able to pay off my $25,000 student loan debt, as well as resign from my full-time kindergarten teaching position. In this video though, we are gonna be doing things a little bit differently, and we're gonna be making over my parents' bathroom. As you can see, this bathroom is in much need of a makeover. My parents bought this house back in 1995 and this room has been very neglected since then. So we have our hands full with this bathroom makeover, but I have some pretty good ideas that are budget friendly that's gonna help us make this as simple as possible. Those things include painting the walls, painting the existing vanity down here, and then also I'm gonna try my hand at painting the countertops. To help us do some of the renovations in this bathroom, we want to thank Beyond Paint for sponsoring this video, but their paint is going to come a little bit later. The first thing that we're going to get to is we are going to be sampling some paint that I picked up from Home Depot for the walls. To get us started, our first step is going to be to choose a paint color for the walls. Now, my parents pretty much gave me free reign over everything, but I have some existing finishes that I have to deal with and make things complement, such as the shower and the floor. Those are tiled and I'm not gonna be replacing the tiles. So we decided to go for a more neutral look and bring a lot of gray tones into the room. I chose out three from Home Depot and I got some samples so that we are going to be able to paint them on the wall and see which one we really like the most. The first one that we are gonna do is Solemn Silence. The second color is Etched Glass. The third color is Platinum. I'm gonna repeat all three color swatches right here where it's a different place in the room so it's going to have much different lighting than up there where I did it. It's very important that you sample the paint because again, different lighting makes the colors look different. Not that one. This one. There's also, then I did them down there too. Just like a different lighting. And this is the one Dad's saying? I don't know. Oh, you're not gonna tell me. You have to choose the one that you like. This is gonna be the cabinets. This is gonna be the countertops. Is that gray? Yeah, okay. it's gray, but I know. Kind of looks little, greeny on there. Yeah, but it's gray. Okay. I don't know why it looks green. But and that kind of looks blue to me, but. It has some blue undertones. Okay. I had said the middle one, but I know not this one that's too dark. Mm -hmm. and then I had I, said the I middle really one. I really like the middle one because it is brighter. Yeah. Then do the middle one. So what do you think? You just do what you want. I don't know. What do you guys think? So it looks like it's gonna be solemn silence. So I'm gonna head to Home Depot, grab a gallon of it, but that doesn't mean I might not come home with some more paint swatches because there's so many colors out there, so many grays, and I don't just wanna limit myself to these three colors. Well, I didn't return with a gallon, but I got two more samples to try out. We've got Ice Sculpture and Tinsmith. So let's put these on the wall as well. So this one is Ice Sculpture. This one is Tinsmith. Bottom right. Yeah, that's the one I was leaning toward too. And so that's the one that you had said. And up there, it's the same one. Same so. one. Yeah, because Neiman had said that. He had originally said that one, but then he, I think he went to the left one, so. I feel like that this one is or a combination right. of these two. Yeah, and it's like the most 
gray one besides that one, but that one's too dark. Right. All right, and there we have it. We chose our color. All of us sort of went toward the same one out of all five of them, and that is this one right here, and it's called Tinsmith. So back to Home Depot I go to get a gallon, and then I am gonna come in here, tape everything off, wash down the walls, and finally get to painting. All right, we got the paint. It's time to get everything off of these walls so that we can actually get started. We're to the light fixture and I went ahead and turned off the electricity so that I could go ahead and remove this. I'm going to be replacing it so I want to be able to paint around it and all of those sorts of things. But the most important part is safety so definitely make sure you're turning off electricity when you're working with lights or any type of cords. Your flipping teacher had to call in the big guns. Ah. Oh, wait, that's not it. Next order of business is to wipe down all of the walls and then fill in all of the holes that don't need to be there anymore with some spackling. Similar to furniture, it's very important that you wipe down the walls just to make sure that there's no dust or any loose particles so that you start with a clean surface before you paint. is done but while that's drying you guys know that I like to still stay active so before I sand that down I'm gonna tape everywhere where I don't want to get the paint it is so necessary to tape even though it's such a tedious job I do not want paint on some of the areas in here so I'm gonna be using this frog tape and it's gonna go around all of the trim and the mirrors and the countertops it's gonna take me just a little bit so sit back and relax. everything taped off and so now the spackle is dry I'm gonna take a sanding block it's just about a fine grit so nothing too crazy and then I'm gonna go ahead and sand down all of the spackling that I put over all the holes and then wipe off any of the dust that is going to be falling
guess what time it is finally it's time to paint i am going to start up top here where my roller won't fit and i'm going to be using a zebra brush because not only are they good for furniture they're also really good for just getting into different corners and around edges so i'm going to use it on the walls and then i'm going to just use the sample up here my brush will fit right in there and then i'll worry about the pouring the paint down there once I get to the bigger walls. Does it for coat number one? I'm thinking we might need a second coat even though this says one coat is enough for full coverage. I'm seeing some spots that aren't getting full coverage. So we'll see when it dries and then I'll probably do a second coat before we're finished with the walls. I ended up doing a second coat last night and we definitely got complete full coverage with that second coat. And so now it is the next day and it is time to take all of the tape off the walls so that we can get to the next phase of painting, which will be the vanity. Wow, taking off the tape really just makes it all come back to life. And it's just cool to see the straight lines and peeling tape is so dang satisfying. Our next step is to get ready for the vanity. So we gotta clean all that off and then we'll get ready to paint. You guys, this vanity has definitely seen better days. It is just, it has some failing finish on it. It has some water spots not it's not damaged in any way but it's just worn over the past 20 plus years it's been worn and so it's ready for a freshen up 
and we are going to be doing that by using some Beyond Paint. As we mentioned before, Beyond Paint is the sponsor of this video and you guys, I love Beyond Paint for things like cabinets because it makes it so much easier. You don't have to sand, you don't have to prime, so it just cuts out some of those steps that otherwise may take a lot longer. This can just be a one to two day flip. And then of course the durability of the paint is right there with the ease of putting it on. Once you let it cure for that full 30 days, it is very durable. So what I'm gonna be doing first to get started is to take off all of the hardware this is the hardware that was used throughout the house when it was first built and when i redid the kitchen about a year ago these were all over it this is the last room that has any of these so kind of feeling some a little bit of we're gonna have to break up with these officially in this household and and i'm, I'm okay with that If you are doing a vanity or even a kitchen that has more than just two cabinets or two drawers, I would highly recommend that you label your pieces that way that they go back in the exact same spot because a lot of the times they only fit in that one spot. Here, I've just got door, door, and I know that the handles are gonna go in the middle, so that's gonna be super easy to put back together. So if I were to label these, I might label them one, two, and then I would also put a little number here in the spot where I actually took it from. Now that we are done taking it all apart, it's time to clean, and probably like a lot of your vanities out there, it's been a little while since it's been clean, mom, don't kill me. It is what it is. And so I am going to be using some simple green, which is what Beyond Paint recommends to use before using their paint. This is a degreaser and it's really going to help cut through any of that dirt and grime and dust and oils that have been accumulating over the past several years. Nostalgia, anybody? We're back here where it all began in my parents' garage. And this is where I'm decided that I'm gonna paint the doors and the drawers just so that I don't spill paint anywhere else. So we're gonna do some simple green on these guys too. So since Beyond Paint is the paint that doesn't require the sanding or the priming, it's very, very important that you take the step to clean very, very well because that's a, what's going to help you get the adhesion from the paint and in the long run be very durable. So once you're done cleaning with the simple green, then definitely go back, take a clean cloth and then rinse everything back as well. You just wanna get any of the residue from the simple green that may be left behind and rinse that off as well. And now that everything is cleaned and rinsed, I'm gonna let these dry out here. And now that the vanity upstairs is probably dry, we're gonna go up there and tape that off for painting. It's time for paint. I got the tape on, so I'm not gonna get it anywhere where I don't want it. It's only going on to the currently oak finish vanity. And today we're gonna be using navy. 
And this is a little bit of a surprise because I actually kind of went over plans and stuff with my parents. Like I said, they gave me free reign, but we kind of still talked about it. But I'm taking my free reign back. And originally we were gonna go dark gray down here. I'm gonna surprise them with navy instead because I felt that there were just so many grays going on in here. The wall's gray, the floor's kind of grayish bluish, the shower's kind of gray, the countertop's gonna be gray and I just felt like that was so much gray. So I wanted a little bit of a pop of color, but nothing too drastic. And so what I decided is we're gonna do an accent color of blue. Like I said before, Beyond Paint is a paint that I love to use for cabinets because it's so durable. And on their website, they actually have available 16 colors, but they also have a kit available, which comes with a paint tray, I like to line mine with foil so that it can be easily cleaned up and reused. And then it also comes with a chip brush and then it'll come with a four inch, three eighths inch nap roller as well. So this all just coming together makes it easier for application. Beyond Paint advises that you use a roller to roll it on and then that you take your chip brush and you stipple in this motion up and down into the crevices and areas where the roller will not fit. So I'm gonna show you all of that as I go. Now, the Beyond Paint is a little bit questionable when you pour it out. It is going to be a bit chunkier than you may be used to for regular paint. And that is normal, it is supposed to be like that. So my first order of business is to take my chip brush here, grab a little bit of paint on there, and then we're just gonna start going around in the spots where I know my roller isn't really gonna be able to reach very well. And then I'm not brushing up and down or side to side, I'm going up and down in this type of motion where I'm stippling. So I'm going to the surface, off the surface, to the surface, off the surface. And that's just gonna give it a little bit of texture, but it will dry much smoother than it goes on. So no worries. If you think it kind of looks crazy at the beginning, that's okay, it's supposed to. And then it'll smooth out as it dries. I like to just go kind of around the edges here. And then we'll go back with the roller and that, that will also help really smooth it out as well. So I'm gonna get all these areas where my roller can't reach. I did use this navy on another bathroom makeover. If you guys haven't seen that video where I redid a huge kitchen and then also a small bathroom, definitely check that out. I'll leave the card above as well as the link in the description below. Hopefully in this lighting, you guys will be able to see if you did watch that, that this navy is a true navy, it's not purple. Whenever I'm doing any sort of doors, painting them, I like to use these painter's pyramids to prop them up. They've got this color, but there's also yellow ones. I'll link them down below in the description, but I just like to put them right there. And then also on this side. And that way when I paint around the edges, it doesn't touch the table or dry onto it or stick to anything.
First coat on everything is done. Well, almost everything. I do have to wait until the fronts of the cabinets dry before I can flip them over and do the first coat on the back. But right now we're going to let all of these dry for the suggested two to four hours because it needs to dry completely so that before I put the wet coat on again that it doesn't take off the paint that I just put on on the first coat. So see you back here in a second. We made it back upstairs. It has been about three hours now, so we're perfect on timing of letting this guy dry. So now we're going to go ahead and do coat number two. I do just need to add a little bit more paint. So I'm gonna do that and we'll get to going on coat two. Coat number two, check, at least for up here, but now we're gonna go back down to the garage and get coat number two on the doors and drawers. Second coat is done on everything, but like before, I do have to do the second coat on the backs here. Everything is just gonna dry overnight before we reassemble. And tomorrow, we're gonna get to work on the countertops. So before we get to the countertops, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the tape here, and then we're gonna install some of the fixtures so that we can get a little bit of light in here. This is the light that we are going to be putting up top. So first, I am going to go downstairs and turn off the electricity. We've got some freestanding lights in here, so that is why you will see light still, so that I'm able to see what I'm doing when I'm connecting the electricity. got the light fixture in and it works. I am going to now replace the faucet because I want everything in here to have a cohesive look. Right now it's chrome and while I could keep that one, I wanted everything in here to be brushed nickel. So I'm gonna be switching that out with just basically the same exact faucet. Um, so I'm gonna go turn off the water and get to reinstalling faucet. All right, this is my first time to put a new faucet on, so bear with me and I got my dad here just in case. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Out with the old, in with the new. I'm gonna go ahead and put that guy right in there. And then underneath, I'm gonna screw them on, connect the pipes, and we'll have a new faucet. Moment 
the truth. Hot. Cold. Woohoo! My first faucet ever installed. And it looks great. It's really starting to come together. We'll see you guys tomorrow for us, but in a few seconds for you. The moment we've all been waiting for, we get to paint the countertops. Our first order of business is to go ahead and clean with the simple greens like we did on the cabinets. Okay, now that that's clean, which is the most important part, I'm gonna go ahead and tape off around where I don't want any of the paint. You may notice me using a couple of different colors of tape. Originally, I used the green tape to tape around, but then I'm using the yellow tape to tape on top of things that I have already painted because it's just a little bit less sticky. It's more delicate than the green tape, and I don't wanna peel any of the wall off after I just painted it. got everything cleaned and taped off we finally get to do the actual project so I have never done the countertop before but I love the on paint in the cabinets so I just decided why not try out the countertops the whole kit is right around $90 so although that might seem like it's a bit expensive you've got to look at it like you're getting a brand new countertop or at least the look of a brand new countertop for under a hundred dollars. So with the kit, you get a color that you get to choose of any of the Beyond Paint 16 colors. You get the multi-purpose sealer, which is just going to give it that other, that, that better protection than just the paint would because this is really gonna be having a lot of wear and water and things like that on it. And then also you get the flex, which is optional if you want to apply these or not. I think I'm gonna try it out. And the flex just kind of make it more looking like a countertop. And then also included in the countertop kit is this kit where it comes with two roller heads, one for the paint and one for the sealer. And then you get a chip brush for those hard to reach areas and then a 400 grit sandpaper for between coats plus the paint tray, which is a great addition as well. So I went with the soft gray for the countertops. So I'm gonna just pour a little bit in here. Again, it is that chunky consistency, but don't be alarmed. So it's recommended that you use your roller on as many areas as possible, but I like to start out with my chip brush, just going along those spots where I know my roller's not going to reach. So especially in the corner areas. So here goes nothing. This paint adheres to any surface, which is why it's okay for me to be putting it on the metal surface here as well, instead of just the actual countertops. I think this is definitely one of those times where it looks worse before it looks better. So we're gonna let this dry and then we'll come back for coat number two. It's time for coat number two. It is looking really good though, even just after coat number one. I'm already loving this look. It's got a matte feel to it, so it's very, 
It's, it doesn't have much texture. It's not necessarily smooth though, uh, but that's going to help with the durability of it as well. So let's go ahead and get on coat number two. And then I'm not sure if we're gonna need a third coat, but once the second coat dries, we'll be able to tell. The second coat here is all dry, you guys. I am loving it. And now I am going to take a very fine sanding block. It's right around a 400 grit and just smooth everything out on that top surface. While I was sanding, I was not trying to take any of the paint off. I really was just trying to smooth out the surface and it really smoothed it out. It had just a slight texture, but now it's very smooth. So for our next order of business here, we are going to grab the flex. So these are the flex that come in the countertop pack. And I am not so sure if I want to use these or not on the countertops, but one way that you can tell if you wanna use them is to have a dry surface and then just sprinkle some on there and see kind of how it looks. If you don't want them, then you can take them right back off. That's why you're doing it on a dry surface versus a wet surface where it would stick to them. So it's similar to a spice bottle. So I just pop it open and it has the holes and you just start shaking. You put as many or as little as you want on there. Personally, I think that I am going to go with no flex. I really am liking this gray color and the brownish tannish colors. That is just the only one that comes with the kit. And I'm just not a huge fan of that for the look in this bathroom. So again, that would be up to you. I think I'm gonna put all these back and we're gonna get to the top coat. Time for the sealer. So this is a multi-purpose sealer and it has a light satin sheen as it says on there. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this the same exact way that I applied the paint. So I'm gonna be using the roller. Whoa, oh my gosh. I am gonna be using the roller as well as the chip brush. And by the way, this is very durable because I just threw that at the counter and there was no chipping, so that's great. One thing that you really want to make sure of is that there's no little, you know, brush, brush bristles in the top coat, like I'm seeing right here, or any hairs or fibers, anything like that. If you see that type of thing, um, make sure that you get that out before you uh, let your top coat dry because that will live in there forever. So definitely get any chunks out or things like that that you see. Anyway, I am finished with the first coat of top coat and the recommendation is to do two coats. So we're gonna let this dry another two to four hours. We'll be back for coat number two and then we'll finally get to start assembling everything else and watch it all come together. It is finally time to start reassembling this vanity down here. I actually went ahead and off camera, I lined the drawers as well as the bottom down here with some wallpaper just to spruce it up a little bit. All right, so now hardware time. 
Here is the hardware that I chose for the bathroom and I got it at Menards, but anytime that you are in need of new hardware, you can always go to Amazon, type in the size that you need and they have a bajillion options, literally. Looking great. I am ready to peel the tape off around the countertops. project just keeps getting longer and longer, but I want to make sure to do everything correctly. So I've just got to stop saying that I think it's only going to take a couple days because in reality, if I want to do it right, got to take my time. So we're going to go ahead and do some caulking around the sink. I think that this will really just bring it all together. As you can see, there's some old caulking. Um, I was telling Neiman that next time I do a countertop painting, I would definitely pop the sink out, paint it all, and then put the sink back in, caulk around it. So if you're doing your countertop, that is a tip from me who just did this, but we're gonna just put some white caulk around it to finish off the look. All right, that wasn't too bad. First time caulking around the sink, but looks pretty good. And our next order of business is to finally start putting things back together. I know I keep saying it, but I really think that we're there this time. Got a new little door stopper that I'm gonna install. Now that we got that on, we can safely put the door back on without it chipping any paint back here on the wall. It's 
on there. It works. I only painted the back side because that's the part that's going to be in the bathroom. And then the outside is staying the golden oak for now, since that matches the actual bedroom. And until that gets an update, that'll be staying the same. Let's keep on moving through. Now it's time for some decorations. I found this blue shelf at Goodwill for two bucks. I found this frame for two bucks at Goodwill as well. And then I just used my Cricut and drew on this little saying. It's actually a Bible verse, pray more, worry less. And so I am going to be putting these up here on the wall, thinking something like this. Now that the door is on, the doorknobs on, and the shower doors are up, it is time to finally start decorating the space. So I'm just gonna do the last minute touches and then we'll be all done. Now that we've got everything done, it is time to surprise mom. Oh, oh. oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, it looks so good! Thank you. It looks great. Oh my goodness. Looks like a brand new countertop, doesn't it? <laughs> Feels like it too. That's crazy. Well, that was a success. Beyond Paint has done it again and made it so easy for me to give a complete makeover on a budget. My mom and dad didn't even notice that I had painted these blue. Well, at least they didn't say anything instead of the original agreed upon gray. So it must have just been so seamless and they loved it so much. So I'm super glad that I was able to do this for them. They've done so much for Neiman and I upon our journey of this whole content creation. And so we just, of course, wanted to give back to them. And this is how we did it. I hope this project inspires you and just lets you know and shows you that you don't have to go spending thousands and thousands of dollars replacing things like countertops or vanities or sinks and things like that because you can take to painting different items to just transform that space. Now I did replace a couple of the fixtures, the light, the towel racks, etc., but those fit right into my budget and I had some other things that I had to work around. I didn't replace the floor, I didn't replace the shower at all, but just these minor updates on a budget transformed this bathroom. Also, remember when you are decorating these different areas, go to the thrift store. There were a few things that I couldn't find at the thrift store, like a soap dispenser that I liked, so I got it at Target, but a lot of this stuff in here was thrifted. This frame was thrifted, the shelf and those decorations all thrifted, so be on the lookout if you're transforming a space. If you guys are interested in using Beyond Paint, whether it be on furniture or cabinets or trying a countertop makeover, check out the link below in the description and then use my code FFT for 15% off, but that won't last long, so get yours down there today. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next week with another one. I'll see you on the flip side.